Welcome back to the wild world of weird horror cinema. I know, I know, it's been a while since we've seen one of these crawl out of the cellar and look at the light of day. And I know that the host looks a little different than last time too, but weirdness waits for no one. Treasure troves of these strangest, grossest, ugliest, low budgetiest, most disturbing films await your hungry eyes and I will deliver them to you. Or am I delivering you to the movies? Either way, if oddball schlock and indecipherable art house are your thing, then you've come to the right place. These are the films that populate independent cinemas, eclectic media cabinets, and late night marathons, full of all the things that would never be profitable in the eyes of a generic blockbuster producer. But who wants to watch generic movies anyway? Other people can do that for us. Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today I've curated 5 flicks to flabbergast, frustrate, and thrill you for years to come. Alright, it's time for part 7 of the Top 5 Weirdest Horror Movies of All Time. Before before we begin, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more strangeness than you ever thought possible. Alright, let's get started. Kicking us off at number 5, we've got Wolf Cop. What was the last movie that you saw that was made in Saskatchewan? You know, Saskatchewan? Canada's prairie? The land of the living skies? Honestly, I'd be surprised if you could name any movie made in Saskatchewan. But get ready to check that off your bucket list though, because I have the perfect movie, Wolf Cop. This small town creature feature was written and directed by local legend Lowell Dean and only came into being thanks to hard work, determination, and the Cinecoop Film Accelerator. Thank goodness too, because how else would we get a flick like this? Fully committing to the old school practical effects in the very modern year of 2014, Wolf Cop is a delight for the senses. Faces, torn off of meth dealers, insane wolf penis transformations, and a grocery store specializing in liquor and donuts called Liquor Donuts. What else could you want? The flick follows the alcoholic and largely useless small time cop named Lou Garou. For all my non francophones out there, Lou Garou is French for werewolf. Let that set your subtlety barometer for the rest of this flick. Lou is, of course, cursed with werewolf powers. Surprisingly enough, Lou is able to remain human intelligence while in lycanthropic form and decides to continue his police work as Wolf Cop. The premise on its own is cheesy in all the best ways and could probably land on any number of weird cult movie lists, but of course I must hold these lists to the high standards of my forebearers, and even when considering those high level requirements, Wolf Cop makes the grade. I mentioned a commitment to practical effects before. At no point in this movie did the filmmakers back down from that promise. We get multiple wolf transformations on par with bona fide classics like The Howling, along with some incredibly cheesy gunplay and more wolf puns than you can shake us silver stick at. And if you think they'll draw the line at some point and reel it in, you are gravely mistaken. We're talking bloody projectile vomiting, eyeball removal via knife, reptilian shapeshifters, a wolf bartender sex scene, exploding meth labs, a time honored event known as the drink and shoot, and the destruction turned pimping out of a cop car to be more wolf cop. And did I mention that we get a lovely close up of a wolf member bursting forth from a regular man member? Unforgettable stuff, really. This one is for you and a few friends to get together and drink over. Maybe you don't warn them about the wang transformation though. Let them experience it for themselves. Filling out our number four spot, we've got Dead Ringers. Yep. That is two twin brothers sexily slow dancing with one woman. Wouldn't be a weird movie list without at least referencing Cronenberg, right? Plus, I gotta make sure we fill our Canadian quota. Of course, we've discussed Naked Lunch in the past, which is a supremely weird movie in its own right, but this one sees Cronenberg at his most restrained. The restraint is actually what makes it such a weird watch, though. The events and characters are totally believable, and at no point are we offered a sci-fi monster or flesh-rending disease to remove us from the upsetting and tragic circumstances. No insane gross-out body horror here. Well, I mean, there's one dream sequence, but Dead Ringers presents a story loosely based on real life events, and as we all know, the truth is often stranger than fiction. We follow twin gynecologists Beverly and Elliot as they operate a successful clinical practice in Toronto. Both are played by Jeremy Irons in an absolute tour de force performance. Somehow Irons manages to present both characters as totally unique individuals while still portraying them as entirely inseparable. You see, the twins share every single aspect of their life. Their practice, 
just their living space, even their women. And while they might think of themselves as separate identities, it becomes apparent as the film goes on that they are totally reliant on each other. When the meeker of the two, Beverly, falls for an actress after Elliot passes her on to him, their relationship becomes strained. Add in unfettered access to prescription drugs and the line between reality and fantasy it's blurred. The brothers begin experiencing delusions and Beverly starts seeing healthy woman as mutant. You can imagine what might happen next. Dark, cerebral, and entirely uncomfortable, this movie is like a slow cinema body horror. It acquaints the audience with bodily terror from a sterile medical perspective as opposed to the spreading diseases and basement lobotomies we've come to know and love. Coming in at number three, Spookies. <laughs> Let's get back inside. Yeah, <laughs> that just happened. I've watched this one a few times and I still can't quite figure out what exactly is going on. It seems like two movies stitched together and marketed as a haunted house extravaganza. Like, a lot of the actors don't even seem to interact with each other at all and the film grain looks different in some scenes. Oh, wait, no, <laughs> I see now. That's because Spookies actually is two movies stitched together. Mm -hmm. This 1986 masterclass in schlock shock is a funhouse filled to the brim with unrelated monsters, maniacs, and screaming teens. Originally titled Twisted Souls, two first-time filmmakers, Brendan Faulkner and Thomas Doran, took the helm on what they were told was going to be a haunted house flick with lots of cool creatures. Higher-ups wanted an insane amount of monsters and effects, leaving the two young directors to figure out how to squeeze it in all under budget. And unfortunately, when the film was about 90% done, the financer decided that they weren't cutting it, and he handed the film over to a brand new team. This team made a bunch of questionable decisions, like going back and shooting an insane amount of new footage, working with pornographers, and hiring documentary videographers. They decided that Twisted Souls wasn't going to work as a title anymore, and thus Spookies was born. The footage that the first director shot involved a spider woman sucking a mustachioed puppeteer dry, muck monsters in the basement, and a rubbery grim reaper chasing people across the top floor. The Spookies squad added in werecats with hook hands, sorcerers, ghost birthdays, and zombie children. This all cut together makes for a very disorienting ride through two totally different ideas presented as one. None of the events from either side really correlate with the others, leaving you kind of scratching your head and enjoying it nonetheless. Every moment is an adventure, and there is absolutely no way to predict what's about to happen next. It's a mess, but I am sure glad I watched it. Slotting in at number two, we have Demon Wind. Spookies had troubled production to blame on its general incoherence, but Demon Wind can claim no such excuse. Directed by Charles Philip Moore in 1990, this shameless ripoff of The Fog Meets Evil Dead had no business being this strange, but hey, I'm not complaining. The premise goes a little something like this. A strapping young lad named Cory meets his estranged alcoholic father and decides to figure out what happened to his grandparents so many years ago in the past. He invites literally every single one of his friends to trek out to the remote farm and scavenge through the wreck for an answer. I guess they do find out in the end what really happened, but it's presented in such a way that each new character that appears is like a brand new mystery. Naturally, all the cars break down and a demon fog, I mean, demon wind keeps them tied down at this old farmhouse. Our protagonists are then accosted by possessed girls, talking bloody dolls, flying kitchen implements, drawn on neon lightning bolts, pus puking zombies, an evil bull skull, and a KY jelly covered flesh devil. The genre and rules keep changing too, switching from haunted house to zombie to kung fu to sci-fi without offering up any explanation as to why any of this is happening. Characters will die in gruesome fashion, only to have the rest of their friends just totally ignore what just happened and continue to talk calmly among themselves. And speaking of characters, they barely exist. Like, the actors are there, but the characters are thinly written and unintentionally hilarious. Intonation, emotion, maybe a second take? Don't worry about it, we'll fix it in ADR, we'll get it in post. I actually thought this movie was Italian the first time I saw it because the way it's dubbed makes the characters look like they're speaking another language. Incredible stuff, really. My two favorite characters are karate fighting musicians who ride in atop a convertible while Ride of the Valkyries plays. Dun -dun 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 Apparently they're Corey's best friends, but we never learned much about that. This movie is a disjointed slapstick piece of insanity and I would watch it 100 times if I could. Maybe a double feature of Spookies and Demon Wind is in order. Who's gonna rent the projector? And finally, number one, Kuso. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
Topping off our list is the Gross Out Anthology to end all Gross Out Anthologies. I don't know how better to describe how this movie makes people feel than by telling you that 20 people walked out on the initial screening. Kuso is a ridiculously obscene movie. Directed by Steve Ellison, or as he's better known, the legendary musical mastermind Flying Lotus, this is a self-funded piece of pure, unbridled authorship. No studio interference, we're getting a mainline of fly low weirdness pumped directly into our arteries. Ellison enlisted Salad Fingers writer David Firth and comedian slash rapper slash icon Zach Fox to lend a hand in writing this oddball, so you know it's gonna be weird. Kuso, or shit in Japanese, consists of four vignettes detailing the lives of mutated survivors after an earthquake destroys LA. And when I say mutated, I mean like mutated, mutated. Like pus filled sentient boils, salad fingers style deformities, open weeping sores, and more. This is a body horror of the filthiest caliber. We don't just see a few characters transform. Form. We see every character already transformed into the most vile humans imaginable. It's not pleasant. And there's not too much to explain beyond this. It's just that consistently gross, strange, and repugnant throughout. It's really hard to recommend this one to anybody but the most serious of Midnight Movie fans. But hey, that's what you're all here for, right? Some of the highlights or lowlights are characters watching snuff films, a cockroach doctor living in someone's butt, Tim Heidecker appearing through a toilet, a small goblin man feeding a sucker creature his feces, a pregnant mother eating concrete, and plenty of psychedelic animated intermissions with sex line advertisements. Beyond the sordid subject matter, the movie is actually pretty well put together. It presents a fully fleshed out universe, and while it is is very uncomfortable to watch. If you can grit your teeth and take a Pepto, you might be able to find some enjoyment in the presentation itself. The animation is phenomenal and the pacing and rhythm are excellent, likely thanks to the multitude of musicians working on the project. Speaking of musicians, the soundtrack might be the best part of all, featuring music by Flying Lotus, Thundercat, Kamazi Washington, Aphex Twin, Bus Driver, and Akira Yamaoka of the Silent Hill series. You might consider just closing your eyes and giving it a listen. If you consider yourself a person of sturdy constitution and a strong stomach, I'd give this one a go. Was it weird enough for you? I hope my humble offering of five strange flicks to watch in the dead of night brings just a little joy into your life. What was the weirdest of the five? What other weird horror movies should we discuss? Let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's see if there are some weird ones to revel in. Ross Monroe asks, how can something ask for help to find its head when it doesn't have any means to talk? I don't know, man. Why don't you go take a trip to the tracks and find out yourself? Guibox3 says, hmm, all this list but Amity are legends, not ghost hauntings. Hauntings are what you find in the asylums and prisons and what you said about Amityville. I mean, like, Hauntings can become legends over time, right? Like haunted train tracks, haunted bus stations, haunted family homes, those all still count. Radical Rainbow says, this put the ghoulies up me. I'm gonna assume you mean that it creeped you out and ask no further questions. JJMCB777 says, love your commentary, man. You bring such a chill, laid back nature to this great channel. Keep it up. Thank you. Always appreciate positive feedback. And Faulty Gear says, Keegan, you have an amazing collection of shirts. Oh, flattery will get you everywhere. I bet your shirt collection is amazing too. That's all the time we have for today, folks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. And then you're old, then you die, and that's life. <laughs> Let's get started. Ugh. But who wants to watch generic movies anyway? Wait for this to really scroll through. When the meeker of the two, Beverly, falls. You know, each new character appears. Nope. What am I saying here? Our protagonists are then accosted by possessed girls, talking bloody dolls, flying kitchen implements, drawn on neon lightning bolts, pus puking. <sighs> oh, that's a long sentence. I should have went in with more gas. All right, let's take a deep breath and get this one. Chill, <sighs> bit. My two favorite characters are karate fighting musicians who fight. I love karate fighting. That was my backup career. <laughs> Pus filled sentient boils, salad fingers styled the form. <laughs> Can't even talk about it without choking up. It's just so gross.